Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. We're live this evening. This is December the 6th, uh, 2017. December the 6th. Tomorrow is December 7th, um, and uh, that was Pearl Harbor Day. We want to dedicate a portion of our conversation this evening with someone who is uh, uh, more learned uh, than I on that subject. I uh, wasn't around then, so uh, we uh, need to go to those who are uh, more aware and educated and experienced in what was going on. Um, and I wish I had a newspaper or something to show you, uh, but December 7th, 1941, was Pearl Harbor, and um, that was uh, Hawaii uh, and uh, on a Sunday morning. And um, uh, it was a surprise attack by the Japanese fleet, the uh, Air Corps. <clears throat> and um, so let me just say that my guest this evening is uh, Ken Dukowski, and uh, a brilliant attorney and a very knowledgeable uh, gentleman uh, on all fronts. You can see this program on uh, YouTube, and there it is right there, YouTube, there you go. <coughs> and um, we'll be educated further on uh, with this. So without any delay, uh, let me uh, introduce my guest for this evening, Ken Dukowski. Thank you. Hello. Hello. And um, uh, uh, you have more experience in this uh, than mm -hmm. I. I mean, did did you get any newspapers, or did you? What, what did you know about it in the family? What did you? Well, I was about six years old. Yeah. I was six years old. That's my, that's my experience. Your, your like, claim to like fame. Professor, like Professor Corey, I'm an expert on everything. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> Professor Corey. That's right. Um, but, uh, it was a surprise attack. It was the first time there really was a substantial foreign attack, uh, forgetting about the Revolutionary War or the Civil War. But on American territory. Right. And it was what we call the sneak attack. It was our way of getting into World War II. And it was kind of devastating. It was as devastating then as <clears throat> as 9-11 is today. Yeah. In, in my family, my father and his brothers, all five of them, went over the recruiting office. It was, there was no question in people's minds of what they did. They had a fight for America. We were attacked on our own ground. Yeah. And Your my father, father was a doctor. Yeah, my father gave up his medical practice and wound up joining the Navy, and they promptly sent him to the Marine Training School, which was a shock to him, because <laughs> most doctors didn't go through Marine, yeah. Marine Training School. <clears throat> and then they shipped him out on, out in the Pacific, assigned him to an LST, which was a, a big boat where the bow opened up. Yeah, it's a landing go. Uh, it was a landing ship. Yeah. And they made <clears throat> they made him a first class hospital, 1939, 1940, 1941 style. And for four years he did meatball surgery. They they made every landing on the island hopping campaign, which took several years. And uh, Ironically, his boat was the only boat in the Seventh Fleet that suffered no war damage whatsoever. And uh, he got out without a scratch. He was lucky. Mm -hmm. It was like a, <clears throat> pardon me, like a mass unit. It was. His, his it was unit. the forerunner of a mass unit. Yeah. They. <clears throat> had a regular shuttle between the hospital ship and this LSD. And we came in, they took the badly wounded to him. He did whatever surgery he had to do. And they were sent out to the hospital unit. 
Years later, I met his orderly. You did. I um, was asked to defend a lawsuit. And after I defended the lawsuit, the, defend the plaintiff walked up to me and he says, I spent four years with your father. And I was sorry that I won the lawsuit. Oh. <laughs> but I did. The day our, <clears throat> the day our, um, our tax are just as serious and can be just as devastating. We have, we have terrorists who walk into crowds and blow themselves up, drive cars. Into people. Hit innocent people. Blow up airplanes, drive airplanes into buildings. Trains, train stations. Scary, it's a scary yeah. situation. And it's an irrational world that we we live in. I would have thought that after all of World War II and the Korean War, uh, uh, after all that uh, unbelievable death toll, that uh, uh, people would stop this uh, uh, nonsense uh, of killing other people. They don't even know. Uh, you know, they're, they're not, this is not just military. If, if it was military against military, these are people that are trained for action. Avarice. But not, you know, avarice, common citizens. Avarice is universal. There are always people who are greedy. There are always people looking for power. There are always people who are antisocial. And that's, that's true. Any place you, you look, we've been talking previously about, about health care. Oh, yeah. And we we're talking we, about the yes, fraud of guardianship. Yeah. And last time I, I was on here, we talked about, about Andy Ostrowski and how, <clears throat> and how uh, they shut him up. And that was up to the minute news. That was in May. You just picked up the stuff off the Internet, and the very next day we, we had the program, and, and you were reading that. That was incredible. Mm -hmm. Have and you it, heard anything else from that? Well, Andy has, Andy has gotten away from them. Okay. And... Apparently, the law enforcement people have clamped down a bit and turned around and said, "We don't like that type of type of that situation. This could happen here in Illinois too. It doesn't really require very much to to have it occur. And if you look at the Illinois statute and look at the uh, the requirements, uh, it doesn't really require much of a health care professional. A health care professional can, I see this. Uh, is sufficient to get you involved, involved in it. And what happened to Andy could happen right here. And if you remember the Sykes case. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the guardian light picked out a a psychiatrist who was willing to find anybody uh, incompetent. He had no problem. Uh, the Guardian said, we've worked with him many times. And in point of fact, they had. They had picked, they picked people and they took and they put him into guardianship. Well, this is the same type of avarice you know what this that is exists like? on a smaller this is, level. This is like... Uh, the SS, the Nazis in Germany, they just pick you up off the street. People disappear. They don't know where they go. They don't know what to do. You can't get get them out once they're in. They have, uh, if you have something that someone wants and they want to attach themselves to it, that's what they do. This is the government. How do you fight them? Well, they have the same thing in the Soviet Union, the gulags. The gulags, okay. And this is the American, <clears throat> the American gulag. If you remember the Sykes case, they never served summons on her. No. She wasn't even in their jurisdiction because she was in one county and this was from another county. Mm -hmm. So when you talk when you talk on a on a world scale, uh, it shouldn't surprise it shouldn't well, surprise it you that there are people like that. It surprises 
everyone or anyone that is a has a thinking mind and uh, is morally straight uh, because you just don't do that to a human being or any one uh, because you are greedy or have avarice or whatever you just don't do that I, well, I they, cannot they're doing understand it. They're, it they're doing it on a regular basis we have we have Philippus Formus down in in Miami who stole a billion dollars from Medicare a billion a billion dollars and very recently I picked this up I picked this up when I was looking looking at another subject you remember the HIPAA Act. Oh, HIPAA, okay. And part of HIPAA was to create a, <clears throat> to create a, um, a task force to marshal the resources of government to prevent waste, fraud, and abuse in the Medicare and Medicaid programs, to reduce the health care costs, and to prosecute these massive frauds that were appearing. There's also the part of HIPAA that we all ran across is uh, the privacy aspects to protect, yeah. to protect people's privacy. And that, that basically is a key element of cover-up. Oh, that is when definitely you, when cover When you complain, you complain that the guardian is acting improperly towards your mother, uh, HIPAA is raised because you're invading your mother's privacy by finding out that the guardian is stealing million millions, dollars, million millions. over a million dollars. Yeah, and <clears throat> I've been pushing the idea. And the we, judges do nothing because the judges are part of the fraud. Well, they're they're part of the cover up. Yep. In in the Sykes case, we had a judge who couldn't have cared less. She had no jurisdiction. No jurisdiction. And she continued the case. She she continued the case, and they rewarded her by yeah. elevating her, her to the appellate court. To the court. appellate court, that's right. And that's right. she's not the only one. You've uh, you, you saw the article in in New Yorker. Your husband has been carrying it on his on, on his blog. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, as to what's going on in Clark County, which is Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's not the only the only one. There are dozens of these things, and in California, you've got, you've got this, and here in Illinois, it's, it's amazing the number of these things that are going. And then, if you turn around and look a little bit further, and you start looking at the news and the rest of it, you run across two cases that appear. You know, we have a, uh, a system here where an individual uh, whistleblower yeah. can bring a suit against one of these bad companies. And a lady by the name Christine Rebuck uh, filed a case in 2009 against a company called Manor Care. You remember Manor Care? Yeah. They have about 300 nursing yeah. homes and she charged that they were they were interfering uh, with health care, and they were charging outrageous amounts. And they were charging therapy for people who were dying. I'm telling you, uh, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, nursing home that my mother was placed in, I didn't put her there, but Miriam Solo put her there because Miriam Solo had an inn with the owner, which was this Formis, mm -hmm. and had bought that previously three years after the Masonic uh, Lodge sold it to them. <clears throat> and uh, they were charging, uh, it was ridiculous. Uh, we sat at a table to talk, to have a conference with what the care they were going to give my mother. Uh, she had arthritis so very badly, she was crippled up. She couldn't walk. She couldn't use her hands. And they had a, um, uh, a Mr. White uh, who was there. And Mr. White was a, um, an art instructor uh, 
for entertainment. Yeah, your mother was 97 uh, years, she's 99 years old. Nine years old. Yeah. She can't even feed herself. Uh, and, and they're uh, giving her art instruction. They, they, uh, and I, I looked at him and I said, I don't understand. What does this have to do? Well, you, and you're paying for this and you're paying for that. I said, Mr. White, do you know who my mother is? Do you, have you seen her? He said, no, I haven't seen her. But this is on the schedule. Everybody, and there were <clears throat> 10 people at that conference. If someone is dying on their last legs in hospice, why are you giving them therapy? Well, my mother was not in hospice. No, but they there, murdered but that's her. What, but this is what was going on. It was this type uh, of a situation. Yeah. It was a clear-cut case of almost a billion dollars. Yeah being mischar mischarged and what brought it to my attention is the fact that the case was dismissed. The government and the defendants got together and dismissed the case and Ms. Rubick complained about it and, and was kind of shunted aside. And this is counterproductive. Why is the government letting this money go? Who in government is allowing this but to go? Somebody's got their hand in somebody's pocket and sure transferring looks like it. Sure it over. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Well, listen, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's got feathers like a duck, mm -hmm. you can't call it a dog. We have another one also involving the United Healthcare doing the same thing. They Half billion dollars. That was also dismissed. Half a billion. <coughs> we're talking. We're, uh, we're talking billions of dollars. Health care cost this country over a hundred billion dollars a year. Who are these judges? Why doesn't someone take notice of who these judges are that are allowing these to be dismissed? These cases, and look into their background. Who are they? Where do they live? What's going on with them? Are they normal? And I mean normal, like maybe they have a mental disorder and you don't know if they're working on a, a medication that they should have taken or didn't take or if they had a fight with their husband that morning. And if they're the judge, whoever is, they're, they're pleading their case before them, uh, you know, gets the book thrown at them for nothing. I can tell you I experienced that with Judge Kawamoto, mm -hmm. who took off, flew, the flight, uh, took off uh, out of Illinois. She was never, uh, um, uh, she was an appointed associate judge. She never ran uh, for office for 16 years, constantly appointed because she was a money maker for the 18th floor probate. This is our, this is our problem. This is our problem. First question comes up. How are judges appointed? How do they become judges? Well, we know if we look at John Cass's article, we know exactly how that occurred. Well, how much money have you got in the envelope, see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that's a criterion of becoming a judge, we're talking, we're talking about a cancer. And this is just as much a sneak attack on the United States as Pearl Harbor. As, as Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Yeah. And we, we are <laughs> allowing it. Come the election, you'll see you'll see these people reelected, and you'll see people who are screaming bloody murder about corruption voting for these people. Now I have a question to ask you. Because of all this that's coming out, years worth of harassment against women mm -hmm. um, in the political office, in Hollywood, the notorious uh, director's couch or whatever, and all this is becoming viable, you know, there it's coming uh, to the forefront. When is it going to clean up the court system, even if we have to take one court at a time, if this is all coming out on the air, uh, you know, look at uh, this Al Franken or what he was in Saturday Night Live, but mm. so big deal. He, he was a comic that you know, wasn't a very good comic, but that doesn't give him the, the, the right or privilege to 
uh, assault uh, an, another human being, whether they be male or female, and uh, he just thought he could uh, say, I'm sorry, and walk away with it. Uh, Mr. Formas answered your question. I do it because I can do it. He said that, absolutely. And that's, absolutely. And that's the reason this is occurring, and that's the reason it's going to continue to occur. You're still seeing people who, are, <clears throat> who talk and claim to be great feminists defending Franken, defending Connors. Connors, 88 years old. You know, the Constitution says you go in there, that's why I like mm. term limits. You go in mm. there two years, you serve your time or six years in mm -hmm. office, you do one term, you do two terms, go back to your farm, go back to your state, take, you know, uh, be a politician there, whatever. But Washington needs fresh blood. Washington needs people who are going to do right by the people mm -hmm. that they represent. <clears throat> Not, what is he afraid? He's 88 years old. He's afraid he doesn't have enough for pension money. He'll never live long enough to spend his pension. No, he wants the power. 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 That, this is what these people are going are going there for. What's the they don't need, with him? They don't need the money. No. They're not going to miss any meals. Any meals. Believe me, he's not missing. <clears throat> it's and, power. Uh, it's a, it's all a power. It's a power drive. trip. It's a head trip. Yeah. It's 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 it, we elect a lot of egomaniacs. Terrible. And, and the own, judges, too, are egomaniacs. Many are. Incredibly so. They want to be in that position not to help people. No, not, they could care less. Not to observe the public trust. They could care less. But, uh, but for the power of the so position. So when is our time going to come to be heard? When we take it. And when will that be? I don't know. I, I don't know. I've been, I've been talking. I might as well be talking to a stone. On, on the issue. It's all I ever asked for was an honest investigation of this health care thing. Always, and you always. Saw, and you, always see, the, written, you see the result. Oh, yes, always. And this, this, this miscreant, uh, Jerome Larkin, writes, it was a reference not to me, but to uh, Joanne Dennison, that her blog exposing judicial corruption is akin to yelling fire in a crowded theater. Ugh. In other words, exposing cr corruption. corruption is the same thing to these people as yelling fire in a crowded theater. So you shouldn't say anything and allow the corruption to continue? That's is exact, that what he's saying? That's exactly the position they're taking. How ridiculous. And they have the power to stop the spread <clears throat> of the reform movement. And they're doing it. Now, at some point in time, this may occur. I'm hoping that this new administration is serious. It looks like they, it is. They put 40, <clears throat> they put 40 some um, AGs, assistant attorney generals, yeah. uh, as part of a task force nationally, and a bunch of them, a bunch of them here in Illinois, to do something. Now. The thing that's disturbing about this Manicare case is the fact that it was dismissed and nobody proceeded. Now, if you're going to just go after the little guys, so you eliminate the, com the competition for the big guys in the fraud area, this doesn't do us any good. It just makes the people that much stronger <coughs> who wish to prey on the elderly. If the present administration is serious, they're going to go after this manor care criminally for stealing whatever money they took. Sure. And they'll go after United Healthcare as well. <coughs> Whoever steals from the government ought to pay the price. Yeah. And this very idea that that health care has to has to cost a hundred billion dollars and have a 700% fraud surcharge included in that thing <clears throat> is other cotton picking mines. As ridiculous it is. We got to bring health care costs down by getting rid of fraud. And that means sensible regulation. It means sensible uh, billing. It means, well, you, go to, you go to the doctor, you go with a sore foot. The doctor decides that 
that your sore fit is due from X. And he does something to your foot. Is that an operation? Does it have to be billed to surgery? Depends. Doctors, when my brother was practicing. Uh, what the procedure is. Is it surgery? Depends. Should it be billed to surgery? No, it depends on what the procedure, what procedure, if he's just going to put a Band-Aid on it, that's not exactly surgery. Well, that's not necessarily the regulation. The regulations are so complex. When my brother was practicing medicine, he had to have a nurse. With him. And, 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 yeah. And, to make, the, to do the billing for him. One whole nurse was required. So you have to add to his costs. But she's a medical person who could be used. The billing doesn't have to be that complex. Yeah. And a hospital bill, you go in the hospital for, <clears throat> for observation, and you get a bill like this. My wife had a, a little problem and went to Resurrection Hospital. The bill was $40,000 for a couple days. Oh. It's absurd. That's why I delivered five of the seven children, resurrection. The well, maternity board is good, I can tell you that. You know, there's certain, there are certain hospitals that uh, can boast they never got, there was never a live patient leaving. Oh. And I won't mention, I yeah, won't mention their the names, but, right. but we all know which ones oh, yeah. there are. There's, there was one, one hospital, apparently the paramedics were directed to take people from our neighborhood there. You got almost no calls of the paramedics. No one wanted to go there. They were afraid, sure. Yeah. They go in, but you don't come, <laughs> you know, you don't not come sure, out. That's <laughs> true, you're coming out. <laughs> that's true. And the quality of medical care in some places is really, is really bad. Yeah. And in some places they haven't learned that, that the disease, the disease theory. Uh, there's one hospital up here on the North Shore that had carpets in the um, rooms they put people in. Oh, that's very bad. A carpet, a carpet's a natural for... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But that's part of the problem. If this administration is, is serious, they're going to go after the big guys. And you're going to see, when the big guys go down, you're going to see a cleanup. And, well, they're cleaning up the FBI. You know, we thought... Uh, I mean, we wrote letters to the FBI. We wrote letters. To, uh, we sent letters and pictures and communications and whatever. Uh, that's when Holder was in, mm -hmm. and he was terrible. Uh, well, apparently he wasn't interested. He was. He didn't, could care less about uh, senior citizens and how they were mm -hmm. treated. And apparently, apparently, government itself wasn't interested. Remember, I wrote, I wrote Senator Durbin oh. about about the Sykes case and, and got, a, got a, uh, a copy of one of his stupid speeches on Social Security. Social Security. That, was, that, that is the attitude. It was the attitude. The question is if it changes. If we want health care, and I don't care if it's Obamacare, Trump care, mumble jumble care, <laughs> the surcharge has to be reduced. Reduce it down to the normal fraud that the government has to endure in their contracts, 25%. And we have health care paid for. What about term limits and removing these people that want to make it their life's career, like Conyers, uh, 88 years old, been there, what, 65 years in Congress? I mean, is there something that can be done with that? Well, uh, aren't these examples to show you how corrupt these people are? And then paying off the people that they assault with public funds, without what's mine, money. What's mine is yours. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I didn't participate with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, they think you did. Well. You know, and if you want, why don't they put him in jail? He's not too old to put in jail. Don't give me this stuff. He's in a hospital. That was a, a, a an emotional plea on everybody because he's eighty eight years old and he's in jail. Well, we have too. we have a little bit of a problem because we have a constitution, and we have due process. 
Uh, Let's this, do the due process. This fellow from Arkansas uh, has been uh, people have been accusing him that 40 years ago or 30 years ago he touched me. Well, the accusation where's the has to be met by proof. Okay, where's the, the proof? And the proof has to be beyond a reasonable doubt okay, if it's a criminal where, matter. Okay, where is this? There's no proof. Okay, anybody can make an accusation about anyone well, else. Uh, some and of it the, has happened. Well, Connors also is entitled to... But his process. office has paperwork that shows he paid out so many thousands of dollars to cover this up. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, the fact that he is a p person in power, maybe this uh, woman, or there are many, mm -hmm. but was afraid to come forward earlier, uh, just like with uh, they Al were. Franken. They, they were, just, just like Harvey Weinstein, Frank, and the whole, bit, the whole bunch of them. There's, Crud, and, garbage, and the thing, the thing that trash. Frank, the thing that Franken did with that picture oh, was, oh, I was, was just to humiliate, devastated. humiliate her, uh, and, and have it held over her head. Oh, that's that, that's right. about as as gross, low, terrible. <clears throat> but, but he he's admitted it. He's admitted this thing, and then came up with a half-assed excuse of. Uh, I may have done that, but I don't remember specifically. Yes, I remember. That's too bad. There is a picture that shows what, mm -hmm. what his thought was. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, well, I can't read your mind. Well, look at what he was doing. What, what does that say? He's not taking out the garbage. That's for sure. Well, there's no question, there's no question about it. There's no question that we, we have to give everybody, including our elected representatives, Due process. They didn't give us due process. That's, but we, but we I have, don't understand but that. But we have to be better. That, no, don't tell me that. You know, justice is blind, but I don't know. She's holding a scale in one hand and a sword in the other. Is there somebody putting something in her pocket? I don't know this, you know. Uh, no, I would like to take the law into my own hands. I'd like very much to go over to Manor Care, find the administrator, and squeeze the seeds out of his Adam's apple. That would, sounds okay with me. But I can't do that. I'll, I'll come with you. <laughs> I realize that. I'll come you with know, you. It'd be, it'd be very nice to be able to, phys <laughs> to physically uh, I mean, look at, solve but, the problem. Yeah, I mean, he's killing people. I will tell you that in the uh, nursing home on Diversity uh, Avenue, on Diversity, mm -hmm. um, that solo put my mother in again. Mm -hmm. They had my mother's picture with a, a, another lady's information on there, and they were admitting a, another lady with my mother's picture mm -hmm. uh, to that. Uh, hey, have you looked at the, we have a group of men running nursing homes. Yes. Here, here in, in Chicago. Yeah. And they've been the people I've been calling the moguls. If you look at the rating on their nursing homes, five being the top, most of their nursing homes are one and two. That's the quality care that they're giving you for $16,000. Yeah. It cost them $2,000, maybe 2500 to service. My mother was paying $15,000 a month because she was on Oak Street, downtown Chicago. And Solo put her there, and she was collecting the money. Of course she was. You got a kickback. That's part of the yeah. indictment, is the yeah. kickbacks. And that's the, the, kickback. the biggest thing that goes on. And uh, Janet Phelan has been looking into, the, into some of the financing of, of these judges oh, and finding some very more interesting... Kickback. Yep. Yeah. Judd goes out and borrows, borrows X number of dollars. He doesn't pay it back. Somebody pays it back for him. Somebody's paying it back and for that's, him. And that's, a, you know, uh, I don't know how to equate these happenings if it's more like being a Nazi or if it's more like being part of the mafia or the Cosa Nostra, whatever you want to call it, because they could just pick you up and hold you for a ransom or take whatever you have uh, and then kill you and dispose of you, and no one knows what happens This is to our you. Pearl Harbor of the day. Pearl and Harbor of the day. it's going right on. It's attack 
on the core values of America. How brilliant of you, how brilliant of you to even mention that. Absolutely it is. And that's what's going, and that's what's going on, and this is what we have to fight, and this is what this is what we have to have to deal with and we have to bring it to the ballot place. And Where? You'll have a, 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 a an enormous amount of people to follow you because all those that have been touched by the greed and avarice of dirt like Miriam Solo, mm -hmm. uh, and I invite her to come on here if you'd like to speak, I give you a full hour of time, you can tell anything you want. You can say anything you want. Come on the program. Let's hear your voice. These people hide. They hide under of a course, rock. Of course, because it's easy. Because it's easier. Of course, she's four hundred pounds. It's a little hard to hide under a rock, <laughs> being four hundred pounds. But this is what she does, and uh, hides under the whatever you know, whatever she can possibly do. Uh, religious affiliations. That's baloney. Oh, that's have, baloney. We have the office of the public guardian. The office of the public and that's baloney too. And the office of the public guardian has been helping these people out. You know, we had we had the situation where thugs were taking she's uh, a thug people thug. off yeah. the street, yeah. homeless people thug. off the street, and they were being declared incompetent. Ugh. And guardians of public guardian was appointed for them and placing them in a nursing home. They were keeping a hundred percent occupancy by this. And then they kill them. And nobody knows who they are or where they're at until somebody from a family member well, goes to look for their th loved this one. is what went on in the Soviet Union. Yeah, well, it's going on here in America. Mm -hmm. Let's bring it to the forefront. Let the public know. Well, this is what you're, this is what you're trying to do right with here this and program now. and with other, with other right, programs. Right Let here people and now. know yeah. that as, as just as I'm sitting here today. And we're sitting here, right. Somebody could come in. Have a psychiatrist say that I'm a danger, that you or I is a danger to myself. Yep. The police come in, they take you to the emergency room, and then you're given opiates and various other drugs, and then they drag you within 24 hours to a judge, and you walk in stupefied. The judge yep. looks at you and correctly and now and analyzes that. You really can't take care of yourself. So then they put you back in, and now they want a guardian for you. And they keep you on. <clears throat> and once they've got you, You're dead. now th You're dead. they own your property. Yeah. They own your house, your car, your boat, your bank account. Yeah. And when you have a corrupt judge like many we've seen. We've dealt with, I can tell you the ones that I've dealt with were all corrupt. The family <coughs> can be pushed off, and it's not uncommon for the family. Uh, they go ahead and appoint a family member, and then, and then the guardian later comes in and says, she stole from, from mother. Oh, that happened in our case. It happens They took my rate. mentally ill daughter, mm -hmm. and who we haven't seen in years, in years. Mm -hmm. um, and she was uh, declared... Uh, mentally ill mm -hmm. here in Lake County. Mm -hmm. They uh, solo Miriam Solo put her in front of this judge. Of course, judge, because she could control her. And she was able. And this, she's forty-five years old, but she is mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And well, so. so they, you know, mental illness is not a cold. It mm -hmm. doesn't go away. It's true. She's ill. She but was they in want, 54 placements. But they want to control her. And they were able to do that. And that's and how they And they stole $1.5 million. And tax-free. And then they blame me that I took it. I was threatened by the judge. Mm -hmm. uh, I was threatened by the judge. Of course. Uh, and uh, to sign papers. Otherwise, they would retaliate against my 99-year-old mother. Mm -hmm. Of course I'm going to sign whatever. I told them, no, I, you know, I, I do this under protest. You know, baloney, they could have cared less. And so uh, a, an insurance agency wants now the money. There was no money taken. We had three independent CPAs vouch for every penny. They don't, they don't care. When there's a fix... There's nothing you can so do. So all the, and the seep and the judges were in with the insurance company, and who collected that money? 
where did that money go? Where did $95,000 go? I don't have it. I was asked uh, uh, by, by the attorney in the court, do I have an airplane? Do I have an airplane? Uh, do I have a, a, a cruiser? Do I have an airplane? Uh, I couldn't afford to put in gasoline in my car. How am I going to put gasoline or a, a, you know, a, a air fuel in an airplane? Lady, don't, uh, don't confuse me with the facts. I made up my mind. Oh, my. And that's the attitude. I, I, was, I said to my son, what is he talking about? Do I have an airplane? Do I have an airplane? How ridiculous. Mm -hmm. How and absolutely that's, ridiculous. And that's, and that's the problem because intimidation is a very important aspect. Well, this insurance company this. is a big insurance company. It's always on the air. It always shows, you know, who they are, who they are. I'm not mentioning the name now, but I could do it very easily. You want to come after me? Come on my program and tell. Let me see the paperwork and then let's un unearth my mother and see how they took 29 gold teeth out of her mouth and stole the gold from her body uh, and how ridiculous you are. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't name names. There's not a problem with that. This insurance it's company wants It's not a this? question of naming names. It's a question of the fact Let's that do something. why doesn't government do something? And I've asked for, Let, and I'm still asking she's, for, she an only honest investigation. Away. I take, know. She take, only passed away six years ago. The body is not in that bad of shape. Take, take, and disregard everything I say. Go in and do an honest investigation. Well, do it. Unearth my on, mother. On, Let's do an, on, an on investigation. Your mother, on, on any of these people. And Sykes' mother, oh my goodness, what they did to her. What How they've terrible. done. To hundreds and hundreds of people. Because you are an honest across person, the country. you are being assaulted. They took someone who was totally out of her mind to make allegations against me. Mm -hmm. And this is costing our country a hundred billion dollars a year. It is Japanese. It is a what do you call it? Uh, it's a sneak a attack. Sneak attack. You said the Japanese were bad enough, and how terrible. Mm -hmm that the judge that we had was Japanese. Well, that the judge in the Sykes case was not Japanese. Well. And the judge in. One left, wait a minute, one left town, that was Kawamoto, she left town, mm -hmm. took off for Texas, thought that picking is gonna be easier there. Uh, and her, her husband was a criminal courts judge, so mm -hmm. uh, she was in probate and he was in criminal mm -hmm. courts. Money was getting passed around like, like water. Uh, and number two is in Sykes' case, that judge took off, uh, where did she go? Uh, she went to England. She first went to... Uh, Which is Stewart? Stewart, uh, yes. Yeah. Stewart's the one who committed perjury. Yeah, she, she went to Texas. And it was covered up. Of course, she went to Texas. Then she went to California. Then she went to Great Britain. Mm -hmm. She went to the UK. So no one could touch her. She, but she was the one that was paying the... the uh, um, uh, taxes on Obama's home. Mm -hmm. There were three people paying taxes on his home on uh, Kenmore or Kenworth or whatever, um, and she was one of the three. She was a, ju a judge, an accountant, and I think a, a lawyer. The those three were paying the taxes on Obama's place in Chicago. And we have all this information. This is, this is what we need. He didn't make enough money, are you telling me, with what he stole from all over? And she took the, the wife. They didn't make enough money. They could pay their own taxes. The problem is we've allowed this cancer to grow. We've, we're allowing this attack to occur against our core values. And it's going to kill us because... This is going to destroy our democracy. This is the biggest attack. That's what they were looking to do, is to make everything universal, make everything to, you know, coincide with what Europe has. <clears throat> we are America. We are not Europe. We fought for our independence against England. We are free people. We are not indentured servants. And we no. have to make our life our life. We will be unless we go after these people. After we go after this banner care, it can't steal money from the government 
and get away with it. Th they and are. they the, are. Well, they are. The uh, government United is Healthcare stealing money. apparently is doing the same thing. Why is there no prosecutions? Why? And why are these, these nursing homes allowed to operate? That's what I want to know. Well, that's the thing. <clears throat> I'm asking the question. I've asked it. Of, I've sent letters to the FBI. I've sent letters well, to the... Well, the FBI we see is corrupt. <laughs> Good grief. Look what you've got in Washington. You don't think that that, that uh, hand uh, has got five fingers on it and it just spreads a, a little bit of its goodness all over the place? Come on. <clears throat> well, we're we getting gotta, rid of we that corruption. We got to do something about it. We're it's obvious. It's obvious the press is not interested. The press is part of the corruption. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to do something about it. We <clears throat> we got <clears throat> we crossed the critical the critical point. As you look at December seventh, and you look at the Japanese oh. invasion, have Terrible. we? Have the scale tip that we can't bring it over? It's strictly a question of what people are willing to do. Are people willing to stand up to this thing? Are they willing to be propagandized? Are they willing to allow things to occur? How many years did we know about the casting couch? Oh, it, it was synonymous with Hollywood. And Weinstein was from where? Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So we didn't know he was doing it, yet the Democratic Party accepted, and Hillary Clinton oh. accepted millions and millions, millions of, dollars of dollars from him. Absolutely. <coughs> and then, and then all the women's organization talked about how wonderful he was. Sure, because they had someone to boost uh, in maybe one of his production mm -hmm. numbers or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, people. Where is the self-worth? Where is the person's self-worth? That's something that you don't even teach in school. Well, except now we have women coming forth and saying, you know what the courage it takes to, to come up and accuse the United States senator? A senator, yes. Uh, that's what uh, my husband said. He said, I said, why did it take this woman so long? He said, this is a United States senator. He could do anything. He could. I said, He's not telling the truth. He's a piece of garbage. He was a piece of garbage on Saturday Night Live, and he's a piece of garbage now. He didn't really win that election in Minnesota fair and square. They held off the Republican because they thought there was some hanky-panky well, going on that's there. All, yeah, that's all past. Well, the point is, the point is, it's taken a lot of courage for these women to come forth. That's right. It took a tremendous amount. Look what happened to the women who came forth on Bill Clinton. Yep. A bimbo yeah. explosion. Yeah. Well, his and wife. That was, and that was the the women's candidate, Hillary Clinton. Oh, please. Called those she's a piece women of garbage. Bimbos. Oh, she's a piece of garbage. She fought those women off tooth and nail. There's scuttlebutt about her having a, a lover, a, a woman lover that was a senator or something. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, nobody wants to hear that. Uh, you know. Uh, it seems as though the, they both play against each other. Uh, you know, uh, he you has... See, the thing about it is, you can't defend the Constitution and not observe it. Well, we're defending it, we're observing it, but we are the honorable ones, they are the garbage ones. If we do what they do, we become garbage too. Well, we have then to, how we do you have to fix take, that? We have to take the position of starting off with an honest investigation. This, this guy from Arkansas, there should be an investigation. Did it occur? If the statute of limitations ran, that's fine. I'm not worried about statute of limitations. Find out the truth. So Do it, an honest, not, not someone like this Mueller who apparently is biased. Yeah. Somebody who has no ax to grind one way or another and look into it. Yep. Now, hopefully, if he's elected, that's what the Congress will do. But if we if we proceed to take shortcuts, we're as bad as they are, and we've accomplished nothing. Somebody has to draw a line and say, we're going to do the right thing. I'm too old to draw the line. 
I'm 81 years old. Well, uh, but but someone younger is going to have to draw the line and say, let's do things right. You know, there is no limit because of age uh, for the right thing to do. Oh, I ha I have to do the right thing. So, but but right now, I'm retired. I'm out of the game. Uh, I know, but when I'm you on see the bench. when you see something wrong, I wish you were mm. on a bench. <laughs> if you would, you would have been a wonderful judge. My mm. God, that would have been wonderful, uh, honorable with integrity and uh, compassion. I mean, that's what we need. Uh, but you've got corruption there that's incredible. You know, it has uh, to be it has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with the right way, and that's one of the uh, and, important things. And I things. used to watch her when I came into court, Kawamoto. Uh, the jewelry she was wearing, way above the standard of what a judge would have. What did she do? Go into their homes and, ra and ransom out uh, the, the whoever's jewelry she had? Incredible amount of jewelry. When it costs a hundred thousand dollars under the table to be to become slated for judge, it's non-refundable. Non-refundable. <clears throat> what kind of judge is you going to get? Whatever what hundred thousand dollars will buy, and she wants to double her money, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, with interest mm -hmm. yet. And then it costs money to get elected. What do you kind of judge? She's are? not elected. You won't understand. And she's appointed. She was appointed. Okay. But uh, but. So Tim Evans took that money. Are you telling me the chief judge of Cook County? I don't know. And I don't know either. I don't know. But who's got but the money to that it took? We should find out how That would be occurred. a good idea. Now, we had Graylord. Yeah. And we had 15 judges went to jail. Good. And they one of the prosecutors it. told me he could have put everyone, every judge on the bench in jail. Okay, deserved uh, it. That's kind of scary. No, they deserved it. They deserve look it what, or not. They, they Look what they <clears throat> did to other people's lives. Don't we you have, understand? We have to have it. What, what we, they do to one person affects an entire family. Yeah. A family. We have to bring honest, honesty back to the back to the courts. How do we do this? I don't know. I hope this new coming year, 2018, <clears throat> we have some light that shines, goodness and prosperity <coughs> and uh, health and well-being that gives us the dynamics to go forward and make our case. And if the FBI is watching, I'm happy to talk with you. I'm happy to give you any information you may need. We put DVDs out there, hundreds of thousands of DVDs and paperwork and whatever, and maybe someone will get the idea that this isn't a joke. Oh, People maybe, maybe, die. Maybe the new year will bring... My mother's only passed away six years ago. She was perfectly healthy other than arthritis. Mm. They killed her. They starved her to death. And, uh, and she's, not the, she's not the only one. But maybe there's enough people out there who will join together? Okay. Demand. Let's do it. Honest investigations Let's of this entire that. thing and start Let's putting some of these people in jail. Let's and do you it. And you got to put the people who are covering up yes. in jail as well. Absolutely. A cover up. Absolutely. And one of the things that we have, that we have, we've got a tax. We've got an income tax. And we have a lot of trouble taking and putting people in jail. It really, is a difficult thing. But civil enforcement of the tax law is kind of interesting. If you went in, for instance, in the Sykes case, your mother's case, or both cases together, any person who acts in an overt manner to forward a criminal enterprise is a conspirator. And if it's involves federal law, it's even better. It's, I think it's 18 U.S. 3, 18 U.S.C. 371. These people are conspirators, and they owe joint and severably the taxes, the money back, whatever. So going into a place like Illinois, 
Corrupt, and corrupt, take, corrupt Illinois. And the IRS, not criminal action, civil action, goes in and says to the two guardian ad litem, the judge, Jerome Larkin, people who work for Jerome Larkin, you owe on the Gore case because of your overt actions oh, that are covered. Terrible. You owe $1.5 million. With interest. Plus, oh. you owe the Medicare oh, overpayments what they stole from that Medicare. were made. Plus, you owe the, the other payments that were made. You owe the taxes on that. Those taxes amount amount to somewhere in the neighborhood of about a million and a half dollars. The taxes. Plus interest, plus penalties from, you know, day, from day one because you never reported it. You know, we have a bill that we were sent that they took from the uh, nursing home on Oak Street in Chicago. They took six uh, x-rays, chest x-rays of my mother in one day. They billed mm -hmm. six at $750 a piece. Mm -hmm. Medicare. Medicare. <coughs> and when I called Attorney General uh, um, uh, you know, well, Lisa Madigan. Why don't these people pay the taxes? When I, when, when I called Lisa Madigan's office and I told, I didn't talk to Lisa Madigan, but I called her office and I said, I'm calling because of Medicare fraud. This is Medicare fraud. She said, well, we don't handle that. We, we only handle if it's a professional against a professional. We don't handle anything else. I said, I'm telling you what happened, what they did to my 99-year-old mother. They, they ripped off the state from Medicare uh, $750 Mm. For six. See, see that, that's that's and our problem. And the lady on the other that, end that, said, "We don't do that." That's our problem. What does the what does the attorney general of the state of Illinois do if they don't protect the people? You see, that's our problem because we're asking law enforcement to enforce the law. Tax people are a different breed. Collect the taxes. They do that all the time. They did it with Al Capone. Al, that's when they put him in jail. They got him they, in jail for that. They've done it with. All kinds. Murder and all everything else, they couldn't touch them, so, so, but tax so they could it, get them. Do it simply. Do it simply. Go over to Mr. Larkin's office and hand him a bill on your mother's, on mother's thing of taxes, taxes $2 million oh my plus God. interest. They'll stop it all. We hear the music playing, so that's got to tell you. Our time here is, you know, <laughs> the, the hour went quickly, very quickly. I want to thank you so much for coming and You're giving up insight above and beyond comprehension, but wonderful. And we want to thank you for allowing us in your home <coughs> or your place of business. I hope you enjoyed this evening's program. We always enjoy having Ken Dukowski on the program. And if you have any questions, please let us know. And he could answer them, or perhaps I. He's more learning than I, of course. Um, and uh, have a wonderful evening, a pleasant week, a wonderful evening, and uh, happy holidays are coming up. Uh, and uh, happy Hanukkah, happy Merry Christmas, and uh, Kwanzaa is coming up. I want to thank you so very much. See you next week on North Shore Live, Cooper's Corner. Thank you for watching. Good evening.